Hello. Good morning, the chairperson, honorable speaker. Distinct. Good morning, the chairperson, honorable speaker, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We warmly welcome you all to this webinar on Angels and Standalone Meeting, Best Practice Sharing Stroke Care Management, organized by Angels Initiative Stroke Care Program. And we would like to thank all the professors, doctors, ladies and gentlemen for joining today's webinar. My name is Dr. Mimia Nou, currently working as Medicare Affairs Executive and Stroke Care Program Specialist at DKSH Myanmar. I will be the Master of Ceremony for this occasion. This webinar will be chaired by Professor Wimin Thit, Senior Consultant Neurologist, Advisor of Myanmar Neurological Society, Myanmar Medicare Association, MMA. There will be three honorable speakers. The first speaker is Associate Professor Tang Wing Wang, Senior Stroke Consultant. The second speaker is Professor San Wu, Senior Consultant Neurologist, Professor at the Department of Neurology, Yangon General Hospital, Myanmar. The third speaker is Professor Sing Nam Nya Senior Consultant Neurologist at RU International Hospital and Asia Rai Hospital, Yangon, Myanmar. Today's symposium will be held according to the following agenda. Agenda one, Welcome speech by the chairperson, Professor Wimin Thit. Agenda two, practice, best practice sharing of building the excellent stroke network in Vietnam by Associate Professor Tang Huang Wing. And agenda three, updates of stroke network practice and stroke care activities planned in Myanmar, public sector by Professor San Wu. Agenda four, stroke care services in Myanmar, private sector, past, present, and future by Professor Sing Nam Nya A. Agenda five, discussion between the chairperson and all speakers. If there is any question, kindly provide the question in chat box. According to the agenda, may I respectfully request Professor Wimente to give welcome speech. Professor, please. Hello. Very good morning, everyone. I'm a Professor Wimente, and today I'm doing the chairperson in this symposium. Everyone knows that uh, the stroke is a, uh, is a very popular and the second leading cause and the second leading death in, in the global. Uh, the stroke we call so-called the brain attack is a loss of the blood flow to the part of brain which damage brain tissue. Strokes are caused by the blood clots on the blood uh, broken blood vessels in the brain. So there are four types of strokes. The ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic strokes, uh, transient ischemic stroke, and also the subacute hemorrhage, as it is, subarachnoid hemorrhage. A stroke can cause the, uh, the uh, can cause the lasting brain damage, long-term disability, and even death. Stroke is the second leading cause of the death and the major cause of the disability in worldwide. According to the WHO data, uh, annually 15 million worldwide surfers of the stroke. Of those, 5 million die and another 5 million left permanently disabled and, and placing the number of uh, burden for the family and community. So that's why today uh, we have our objectives. Uh, we do the, the symposium with the objective of the meeting. So we do the experience sharings of current practice in stroke care in two countries, learning of disability stroke management in Vietnam, such as free hospital setup, including ambulance system, the experience sharing from the Vietnam, how they handle without a proper free hospital setup, and what are the challenges of thrombolysis and thrombectomy, and how to handle those challenges and how to implement better stroke management with limited resources. Uh, today, there is a four eminent speakers. Uh, the first speaker is a, a professor, as we say, Professor Chang Hyun Nguyen, senior consultant, uh, senior consultant, and from the uh, Vietnam. So I would like to introduce uh, uh, about the doctor, uh, Tang Hen Nguyen. Uh, he is the vice president of the Vietnam Stroke Association, uh, president of the ACM City Stroke Association, a member of the Asian Stroke Advisor Board Committee, scientific committee of the Asian Pacific Stroke Conference. I would like to call Professor Nguyen to deliver your uh, excellent speech and the excellent presentation. 
Uh, thank you uh, very much, Professor uh, William Dick. Uh, we, I'm very happy to uh, to see you again. Uh, seeing we, I have a, I, I did have a great time in uh, Myanmar in uh, three years ago. I think four years ago. Uh, so uh, today is very happy to uh, to to see all of you back. Oh, can I share my slide, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, today, I, I would like to share about my experience of current care, stroke care in Vietnam uh, right now. And um, uh, these are it's, uh, my uh, outlines. First of all, I would like to, uh, to share with you a little bit uh, stroke burdens in Vietnam and the rest of uh, stroke care in Vietnam and acute therapy protocol and challenges. Uh, how about the stroke burden in Vietnam right now? As you know, is my city. Uh, yeah. My city, we have uh, Ho Chi Minh City. We have about ten millions of people, but population of Vietnam is uh, nearly hundred millions, and we have uh, fifteen hundred uh, hospitals around the countries. And I think is we we share the same the similar um, because we have a very limited budget, especially for um, medical uh, for medicine. Uh, from 2016, we have uh, the GDP of Vietnam about 200 billion, and now a little bit better, I think about 3 billion. But the budget for medical services is slow, as only 6%, I think around 126 US dollars per person per year is a very limited uh, budget for. Uh, and it's a number of the, the Ministry of Health. It says we they calculate about two hundred thousand new stroke per year, but I don't think so because it's uh, I can show you the the data from my own hospital. I I I want to repeat we have we have a hundred we have fifteen hundred hospital around the country, and this number only my own hospital is the only one only, so. You can see uh, from every year, the stroke admission increased dramatically. And at the end of 2019, we have nearly 14,000 uh, acute stroke admission. And last year we have about uh, nearly uh, 16,000 uh, stroke admission. This is a very big number. And you can see, you can see again the number of the Ministry of Health publics about 200, 200, um, 200,000, and only my hospital around 15,000. So I expect the number of stroke patients in Vietnam should be uh, bigger. And uh, how about the range of, uh, this is to show you the range of the 25 causes of year uh, of live loss in Vietnam. If you can see the left side in the uh, 1990s, the stroke in the number two is a, is a lower than a lower respiratory infections. But from 2010 up to now, stroke in the top one uh, of Vietnam. And this is a number of the Ministry of Health is, uh, is published in 2008. I show you either you are male or female Vietnamese. And the stroke in the top cause is a mortality. Uh, 18% in male and 23% in female. Hannibal chest of stroke care in Vietnam. As you know, before 2006, we don't have stroke, any stroke unit around our country. And before 2006, we, we treat the patient, we stroke patient in the general neurology. And we, after 2016, we separate the stroke work uh, separately uh, from general neurology department. And it's the first uh, stroke unit we uh, we organized in Ho Chi Minh City, as well as in Vietnam is my hospital, the People 115 Hospital. And uh, now we have a 140 stroke beds uh, with uh, 16 neurologists, uh, 52 nurses and five physical therapists. And now we have the biggest one uh, of uh, Vietnam about comprehensive stroke unit. And so I think 
if you compare with at least the 2,000, uh, thousand to 200,000 uh, a new stroke uh, per year. Uh, and I think it's, it's, it's far enough. It's far enough to uh, for such a big number. And so that's why we, we, uh, we, we develop um, stroke unit around the country. As you know, in uh, 2016, we have, that means that 10, 10 years after the first one we organized, and 2016, we have a stroke unit about uh, one comprehensive stroke center, two the uh, stroke department, and nine uh, stroke unit. Totally is uh, 12. But 2021, you see, now we have about 81 um, stroke unit around the country. Amongst them, about six comprehensive stroke centers, uh, eight stroke uh, department, and uh, 67 uh, stroke already already unit. And how about acute uh, therapy protocol and challenges? Uh, pre hospital. I, I uh, three four years ago I, I go to uh, your country. I I very surprised because because your country I think is very rarely I I, I saw the 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 bicycle. But different story in Vietnam. A lot of motor bicycle. And and the traffic is a disaster, uh, especially in rush hour. So that's why you can see more than ninety, more than ninety percent of our stroke patients arrive hospital via public transportation. That means they go by private, uh, private car, or they go by um, taxi, or Grab, or, or Uber. It's not from a paramedic, uh, and. Uh, and I just want to show you this uh, is our uh, public is first publication uh, about TBA IV TBA in Vietnam. Uh, we did in the in five years uh, for first five years from two thousand six to two thousand nine, and it's included in one hundred and twenty one patient. We compare the we compare the the, the result between us is is the is the blue one compared with orange one is the uh, NINDS. A trial, you can see we have we got the similar uh, result, a little bit better. 40, uh, 43 patients with morphine King 01 uh, three months, and uh, hemorrhage is only 4% compared with 6%, um, and the death only 8% compared with 17%. Why? Why we got the better outcome? Because it's the first, it's the first time we, 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 we do TPA. So we are do very careful. We exclude all of things. We include all of own uh, patients. A patient uh, more than eighty, we don't treat them. Uh, so that's why the that's why the, the, the mean age of the this trial very low compared with uh, NINDS. But very uh, when you can see uh, you you can see here is the first time the median door to needle time of Earth is about seven. The five minutes is uh, is very very long compared with uh, now, and especially less than forty percent of patients receiving TBA within for sixty minutes. So, sixty percent of our patients receive TBA out beyond uh, sixty minutes because a lot. Uh, the, the most of the time we we because the trial in the ER doctor ER department and other thing we we need to a lot we spend a lot of time to extend to extend explain the the, the consent form uh, the how about the risk and the benefit of TPA so that's why we is it, it it took us a lot of time so you can see here is a is a part one is a story our story in part one you can see in two thousand seven. The patient go to the ER and got the thrombolysis need to pass on seven steps. Uh, e EMS transfer to ER department and uh, uh, the patient need to neurodiagnostics and the CT scan ordered by neurologist. So the ER doctor uh, have to phone and make a call to neurologist and neurologist come to the ER and to make the uh, uh, to see the patient and uh, to order the C scan. And the patient, after that, the turn for to C scan. And after doing C scan, the patient come back to neurology. And 
do thrombolysis. It's a lot of, a lot of trial before thrombolysis, seven steps. And so that's why the door to the treatment is about 75 minutes to the first time we did the TPA. So what we do, uh, the action from 2017, when we work closely with angels, we do a lot of action meetings, including ER department, and also as well as EMS attended uh, the meeting. And the plan adopted to significant shorten the time need to diagnosis and to treat the stroke patient. And we have to define what EMS group should do in field, define what ER department should do, and define the communication channel between hospital and EMS and communication between ER and neurology team. So that's why we have to change the, the protocol and we define who authorized to sign. And uh, we uh, that define again, the EMS group should do. The first thing the EMS can help us to do the fast panels diagnosis of stroke by fast size. And uh, they do the correct the, the treatment. Very simple thing. They maintain the oxygen saturation and they can treat the hypotensive or hypertension, but we have to, to train them. We don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, don't treat the patient if the blood pressure below 220, because if the, the blood pressure more than 220, we need to treatment. Otherwise, don't touch uh, blood pressure. And uh, uh, they can help us secure uh, for IV access, and we uh, we we prefer you know, to get a two locks for IV access, and measure the correct glucose level, and uh, they can do the ECG, uh, and to search for AF. And uh, one more thing, they can help us to collect the relevant medical history of the patient, especially the onset to symptoms and medical location list, and uh, stroke history of patient. And they use as a guidance tool for paramedics. And all the things in case the patient cannot uh, they, they go privately and we cannot do, uh, we can do, we can do any, all the, all the thing is very, mean, we have a minimum delays. And how about the department, the ER department can help us. We can should do in field, the check-in time again, the stroke onset for uh, confirm the patient go in golden window. And after that, check again the fast side. The patient have the fast side uh, and activate the cold stroke before do go to the C scan as soon as possible. They check again the IVSS and blood pressure control and uh, measure again the glucose level and ECG. But all of these cannot, cannot delay the time from uh, admission to the C scan. And uh, again, they can, uh, the ER, uh, they do again the medical, uh, passive medical uh, uh, hospital uh, history of patient. Uh, and they, they use a, a guidance tool for ER department. And all of this done by hospital with minimum delay. And you can say, and after that, after that, after the uh, C scan and after they activate the cold stroke, and uh, by ER, the uh, neurologists, the neurologists will arrive to ER department with the stroke bed. It's a stroke bed is very important. From my experience, the stroke bed can help you to reduce the time to uh, the door to need the time, significant. So we need to to uh, uh, to get the stroke bed in uh, in a stroke your stroke units. It includes everything inside. And uh, for confirm that you cannot, you uh, the nurse uh, cannot forget anything uh, needed. And uh, uh, we neurologist will check the C scan on the left. And because the you know, family, the patient and family, uh, and uh, consent form, and we bolus the C C uh, the TBA at the C scan room. And so you can see uh, in the part two we we delete the three steps. And now 2005, we have only uh, four steps. So 
we uh, reduced the door to need a top significant from 75 minutes to uh, 45 minutes. It's a, <coughs> it's a rescue uh, data we uh, collect between, uh, between 2017 to uh, 2018. Uh, we collect more than uh, nearly 7,000 patients with the first ever stroke. 44% is women, and 80% is ischemic stroke, and 20% is hemorrhage. And the mean time from stroke onset to hospital arrival was nearly 16 hours. So you can see here, uh, percentage of patients come with us in uh, three and a half hours. That means the TPA time is about 12%. And so you can see the, the percent that we do a TPA uh, from 2017, about more than 9%. And the time to need the time is 45 minutes, 45 minutes. And uh, we also do uh, a thrombectomy. And you can see here, a thrombect AV TPA and thrombectomy in 2.2% and the endovascular treatment alone about 2%. Is now the now the percentage of endovascular is much much higher because we extend the time window. I will show you in the next slides, and you can see here is the door to need the time first. Is the bits on the patient go to uh, uh, go to C scan after admission ten to fifteen minutes to got the C scan, and then uh, neurologist uh, come to ER with uh, stroke bed, and we do the. Uh, extend, explain the consent form for a patient and start follows the TPA inside the CT scan. And after that, we do the CT, CT angiography for all of shock patient. A revision occlusion uh, measure vessels, we will transfer to the cat lab right away. We don't wait for, we don't wait for uh, TPA finish. Finish. That's that's the most thing we, we need to know, and uh, we do right the transfer directly to the cat lab uh, during the TBA infusion. That's very important to save the time. So I can show you this the case. I can show you uh, this is a very uh, very old uh, female. Uh, this more than eighty years old, and come from uh, transfer to, from from. Uh, um, other uh, hospital, uh, the patient give an AF, uh, AF uh, atrial fibrillation, and we uh, we come to the stroke team, come to the ER with the stroke bed in uh, during the patient on the C scan. After seven minutes, the patient got the C scan, and the first C scan has no bleeding. We we extend, we explain the the the, the risk and benefit of TBA, and we follow the TBA. You see, here is the, the very own female in the right, completely right side uh, weakness, and she nearly coma. She cannot respond any of uh, of um, uh, of um, uh, your uh, your your ask. So we uh, we uh, we after we follow the TBA, and we uh, put the patient come back to C scan to do CT angiography, and after. Uh, 33 minutes, uh, we see it's done with the CTA, and it show you is a completely occlusion of um, the left M1 MCA. You can see it's a lot of uh, signal of uh, the left M1 MCA. And we extend again, expand again the, the uh, thrombectomy, and the patient, after the patient of great, we transfer her, her to the cat lab. And the cat lab is uh, well after we stroke activate stroke code the the INR team is uh, pre wait for her in the lab and you see here and uh, all are very fast to uh, uh, extend explain to get the consent again and because you know uh, the, the the most of the, the um, limitation of the thrombectomy is the money uh, is the money is the more expensive and the insurance pay only fifty percent. And it show you, uh, we use the stand, uh, uh, three stand to uh, to take out the big thrombus in the M1. And we got the regeneration. 
uh, after um, about 75 minutes after admission. And you see here, uh, just right, just try right leaving the cat lab. The, his uh, now can respond. Now respond the, the, the stroke team and uh, the, the function. Yeah, she's much better. And yeah, she can move, she can move too. Uh, just uh, just um, waiting to back to um, uh, back to the neurology uh, team. And after only three days, we can transfer her to uh, rehabilitation. What? What do we do next? So, everybody is very important because it's uh, right now we uh, we we uh, we bolus the TBA in C scan, and uh, after that we and now we have only only three steps before our thrombolysis, and so and now you can see uh, the draw to needle time is a uh, new uh, publication of us 2020. You see the draw to needle time now is only. Uh, 38 minutes and the door to bond time is uh, um, about 120 uh, 26 and the thing is now I think I think is the, the the program the big program of us is the arrival time the time to onset in my hospital I'll show you the time onset to my hospital if we uh, if we do a TBA in four and a half hours only 14 uh, percent is a candidate for thrombolysis if we do a thrombectomy in six hours, we have plus about 9% more. I think about one four of patient, a stroke patient have considered to uh, thrombolysis or uh, thrombectomy or combined. But you see a lot of patients come with us within six to 24 hours, 40%. So that is very important for us to expand the time window for treatment. So that's why we, uh, we change the endovascular protocol. Uh, we, uh, we use uh, rapid software to do perfusion. And now we indicate for extend to four, six to 24 hours for all patient work up stroke or patient come with us within 24 hours with, uh, with a large uh, vessel occlusion. And all the patients, uh, we, we do uh, CT, CDA, CD perfusion, or MRI, MRI, and perfusion. We change the protocol for uh, sick. This is uh, a uh, protocol for uh, patient coming up from sick to 24 hours. <coughs> all patients go to C scan, CTA, uh, CT perfusion or MRI perfusion, and go to CAT lab. And also, we we organize the uh, many spots. Uh, in, in you can see is uh, the the Ho Chi Minh City map. We have about four hubs. It's a four uh, big center. It's our center is the the, the is the one, and uh, we uh, with the four center can do uh, come back to me. We can receive uh, a lot of uh, spots uh, around the uh, Ho Chi Minh City. And all of them can do the TPA. And then uh, we go to trip on ship or they can do directly uh, ship if uh, they cannot do uh, uh, IV thrombolysis. And I can show you the, the, the rescue. So this is, this is the case we do a TPA uh, per year. You can see uh, 2017, we have more than 500 cases in my hospital only. And 2018, we have nearly 1,000. 2019, we have more than 900, okay, with the TBA. But about thrombectomy, thrombectomy before 2019, we have about 40, more than 40, 400, uh, 400 cases, we do thrombectomy. But after we do a rapid, we extend the time, uh, uh, the time window from six to 25, in 24 hours, we had nearly 800 uh, thrombectomy, and now we have nearly 1,000 uh, thrombectomy per year. And I show you the data is the rescue. It's the owner of the data from 
23, 23 stroke center um, around the country. And uh, it's, uh, um, as you can see here, is uh, now turn back to me about more than 10%. It's uh, higher than uh, turn back to me. It's uh, the first time we, uh, we found is a uh, thrombectomy is a higher percentage than IV thrombolysis because it, we extend the, the time window. And yeah, this uh, data we, uh, we review on uh, the countries. The door to need the time you see now is the uh, whole country is very good. Uh, between uh, 30, I think about 30 to 36 minutes, a door to one time about uh, 60 to uh, 90 uh, minutes and regeneration rate around the country is um, up to more than uh, 50%. So other challenges uh, is uh, because it's, we have a um, very large number of admission per day, uh, more than 200, 300 cases per day and amongst them 10 to 20% is stroke patient. So very high pressure to face with uh, uh, other emergency situations. So we need to share. We need to share. We need to share the um, to share the uh, patient with ER doctors, and also we we set up the separate beds for stroke in ER department to pay more attention. Oh, this patient needs to to rush out. So uh, if if you you put the patient mixed to others, so maybe they can they they forget it. So. We separate only five beds in the ER doctor, ER patient, ER, ER department for only for stroke. And I think it is that we can make more attention to uh, ER doctors. And we can communication by Viber or Jalo uh, or face, uh, FaceTime. I think we can easy to activate uh, stroke code or uh, communication between a uh, stroke team. And we also regular training with ER uh, team about one per month uh, and with um, um, uh, stroke team. How about all the challenges? How the cost of Achilles is now about 450 US dollars in Vietnam. So, uh, but, uh, and uh, the cost of thrombectomy is now a little more about 10 times. Uh, higher, uh, about uh, 300,500 US dollars. How can we overcome? And very, very lucky because the government insurance reimbursed about 80 to 100% for Achilles and 50% for Tumbectomy. And uh, that's the thing, that's, a, that's the re reason why we rarely, rarely refuse uh, TBA for stroke patient. And also uh, we, we have, uh, uh, we call for uh, private foundations funding for very poor patient and they don't buy the insurance. And also they need the TBA treatment and the that they can pay for, uh, they can pay Achilles for them. And uh, one more thing is we can use the use device for automatomy. As you know, uh, for a new one, we have we charge the patient three, uh, three, uh, three thousand and five hundred, and for a patient very poor, what we do we do use device, and we uh, we just uh, charge very little bit, little money, uh, for the U device. Um, so that's why we have very big, um, you know, big number uh, patient we treat with uh, either IV or combined with thrombectomy. So uh, our conclusion is a uh, stroke care in Vietnam is now it has significant improved recently, especially acute stroke treatment. And but also we need to increase the, um, the number of stroke units and uh, specialize. We uh, have to standardize the stroke treatment protocol and how to how to uh, reduce the draw to need the time uh, uh, to um, uh, maximize the benefit of acute stroke treatment. And but. Actually, we still have small number of patients present with hospital in the golden hour. So stroke awareness campaign in community, for me, I think it's very important to improve the candidates for the canalization therapy. Uh, thank you uh, very much for attention. Um, thank you very much.
professor for your um, excellent presentation about uh, the stroke care management in your uh, countries and in your hospitals. Uh, with the timely thrombolysis and thrombectomy uh, in Vietnam uh, to save the, uh, the people life and to recover quickly. Thank you. So the next agenda is, I would like to, uh, according to the next agenda, I'm pleasure to request Professor Sang Wu to give his presentation. So Professor Sang Wu is a uh, professor of neurology and uh, neuro uh, professors of neurology and neuromedical department. And also uh, he's, he's a senior consultant neurologist and he is uh, the project manager of the Lima Epilepsy Initiative collaborations between the ministry, uh, collaborations between the WHOs in our country, and also a secretary general of the Epilepsy Interest Group of Lima, IRAE, Asia and Ocean Years, and also the general, sec uh, general secretary of the Lima Neurological, Lima Neurology Society. Professor Wu, uh, please uh, turn your, uh, the presentation. Please start your presentation. Uh, very good morning, Madam Chairperson, uh, Professor Tang, and all my colleagues. Today, I'm uh, going to share my experience about the stroke service development in Myanmar. Uh, since you've been to Myanmar and uh, seen to seen the uh, current situation, uh, previous situation uh, by uh, with with your eye, so uh, it will be very very uh, easy to for you to uh, understand it. So uh, I'll discuss uh, today with the, the following the topics. Firstly, my country profile and uh, neurologic. Secondly, neurological care services in Myanmar. And thirdly, the stroke services in uh, Yangon General Hospital, Myanmar. And uh, finally, our future plan. The name of my country is, uh, full name is uh, Republic of the Union of Myanmar. And it has a seven regions and states, seven states, and total population is uh, 51.9 million, uh, which is about uh, half of your country's population. The capital city is Nipido, and most populous region is Yango, uh, whose population is around 7.3 million, about 80% uh, of your Ho Chi Minh city. Uh, in Myanmar, neurological uh centers are only uh, situated only in the uh, three cities yangon mandalay and nebido and where we can uh, provide with uh, neurologists in yangon there are three centers one is uh, at our yangon general hospital uh, second one is uh, not local Apa general hospital and third one is the at the defense service general hospital and another one is in the uh, Upper Myanmar, which is uh, Mandalay, uh, previous the, 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 the old capital of Myanmar. Uh, it is uh, Mandalay General Hospital. And that one, that city where our neurology center is uh, situated is the Nibiru General Hospital, thousand bedded hospital. Uh, the, this is the facilities distributed in our uh, the 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 uh, hospitals. Uh, sixty four slice CT scans are available in all tertiary hospitals, and sixteen slice CT scan are available in all states and divisional hospitals. MRI scanners are operated in uh, some tertiary hospitals as well as uh, private hospitals of Yango Manley and Nipido, and. Uh, the carotid doppler and uh, transcranial doppler machines uh, are running in all neurology centers in Myanmar. The secondly, will, I would like to uh, discuss about stroke services in the Yangon General Hospital. The stroke units, first stroke units uh, in Myanmar was opened at Yangon General Hospital in 2015. Uh, it, 
was started with the five monitor beds uh, with the stroke HU facility and uh, 20 non monitored stroke beds. And with the acute stroke rehabilitation by in house physiotherapy. And these are the some uh, uh, photos of our the, the Yango General Hospital stroke center. Uh, this uh, upper photo one is a uh, emergency receiving center. And uh, we have a CD control room with uh, up to the 108 uh, multi slice scanner. And these two beds are uh, provided for the, the acute, uh, acute stroke patients at the ER department. And those are the stroke uh, HDU beds in Yangon General Hospital. And, and the those are the staffs and uh, our neurologists and our madam uh, chairperson at the time of the, the start of our uh, stroke training uh, by the, the, the uh, uh, Thailand, uh, Thailand Stroke, stroke uh, Center. This is a signing uh, ceremony of the letter uh, MO, MOU uh, between the our uh, University of Medic Medicine and the the the, the, the Thailand uh, Hospital, and this is the signing ceremony attended by our rector. And those are the photos of training at the Yangon General Hospital, and organized uh, by the the uh, Boringer, uh, Boringer company and on, and uh, very beginning at the beginning very beginning of the 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 uh, uh, opening of the stroke center and those this is the current uh, guideline we are using for the the uh, uh, acute stroke management and we we have a less than 40 4.5 hour onset so we uh, did the uh, ct uh, uh, we did the acute folks, uh, acute uh, active uh, activate the uh, stroke fast track and we did the following uh, procedure and if all indications are met we give the the rdp and this is a photo of the the ASEAN program of stroke uh, development in uh, 2018, uh, attended by our uh, Madam Chairperson. And those are the another trainings given at the Yango, Mandalay, and Nipido. And this was a, a training uh, given together with the the assistance of the Angels Initiative and the Boringer area in Yango. The our so fast track and thrombolysis uh, therapy started since uh, December two thousand fifteen uh, from the donation of the International Cultural and Charity Group which is the NGO, and uh, we have up to now a uh, total of uh, 268 acute stroke, ischemic stroke patients within the 4.5 hours from the onset, from 2015 to 2022. This graph uh, shows uh, the, the, the uh, number of cases uh, we thrombolyze uh, each year, and the number increases uh, from 2016 to 2019, where up to the before the, the, the start of the COVID outbreak. And since the end of the 2019 to the 2000, uh, 2000, 2021, uh, we have suffered uh, COVID uh, uh, three waves and the thrombolysis was uh, dramatically uh, fallen. 
And uh, after that, uh, in the 2000, uh, later uh, months of 2021 and 2022, uh, we have uh, some shortage of the, the staffs and uh, neurologists uh, uh, to do the uh, current uh, political instability. Although the uh, COVID condition was uh, stable from the year 2022, so that uh, we, we cannot uh, uh, reinstate to the previous stage of the RDBA in our center. This uh, graph shows the total needed time uh, of our RDBA patients. It's, uh, initially, it was uh, only uh, 45 minutes, but uh, later, uh, the total needed time increases uh, up to the uh, one and a half hours. And at that time, uh, we have to review and do the training again and do some meeting with the ER doctors and uh, do uh, some procedures uh, to the shorten the dodo needle time. After that, uh, the dodo needle time gradually uh, shorten up to the uh, 52 to 48 minutes in more than 80% of patients. Uh, this uh, table show the, the in uh, yearly uh, thrombolysed patients, uh, mortality and outcome. Uh, the in uh, total 2,068 patients, uh, 21 patients expired, and that is 8%. And good outcome patients are 41.5%, and bad outcome patients are 34.2%. And unfortunately, uh, we lost follow up about the 16.1% the, uh, of cases. Because of, uh, our country is a, a very a wide area country and uh, the communication of the, is also not very good between the areas. So these, uh, this table show the standard indicators of uh, thrombolysis ischemia stroke patients in Myanmar. The average total to needle time uh, for IV RDPA cases are from 45 to 52 minutes. The percentage of mortality is, uh, although the target is uh, less than 3%, uh, our mortality is 8%. It's um, more than double higher under now. And Concerning the percentage of ischemic stroke patients who receive antiplatelet for the target within 48 hours after symptom onset, uh, we can fulfill uh, about the 100%. We can give the antiplatelet 100%. And percentage of ischemic stroke patients who are discharged home and receive antiplatelet or anticoagulant on discharge, uh, we can give 100% as targeted and percentage of ischemic stroke patients who have a high LDL and receive statin, uh, uh, we can give more than the targeted one. And this is a training course we give uh, for our local, the, the general physicians in 2020. And we can give the 12 private hospitals and Where private hospitals and uh, um, all the government hospitals across the country. Next, I'll discuss about our future plan. Uh, since I have presented, we cannot extend our uh, acute stroke management to the the the, the uh, IV uh, thrombectomy. Uh, we we cannot uh, do thrombectomy training, even uh, training yet. 
So stroke surface is nyma is a, we can call a very primitive stage. So we have many needs and many gaps. So uh, and also we cannot uh, even uh, give the stroke service availability 24/7 in Yangon General Hospital. And uh, as as uh, we have discussed uh, earlier uh, through the the, the angels. Uh, uh, we cannot uh, uh, set up any uh, pre-hospital care like the emergency uh, emergency uh, uh, the ambulance system yet, and to, we cannot uh, the the open the stroke units in all the tertiary care centers, and we have to also uh, promote the private public partnership in healthcare delivery. And we have to establish country stroke data by stroke data registry. And we are very also primitive in this uh, data registry system. Uh, it's not only in this uh, stroke, but also in all the other diseases. And uh, rapid diagnosis improved the stroke care, the strategy to overcome these barriers are categorized into pre-hospital and post-hospital strategies. So pre-hospital strategies, as I previously said, uh, public education on stroke symptoms awareness have to also improve and uh, we have to prioritize, prioritize stroke by emergency medical services. Um, we have to increase uh, ease of access to medical records, pre-hospital notification, and uh, we should also do the mobile CT scanning. Uh, as a future plan, uh, we should also do, do the telemedicine and mobile stroke unit, and uh, which uh, will uh, help in uh, the resolving the the very, very uh, poor uh, HR condition. So uh, mobile telemedicine for remote clinical, the, the imaging and the, the patient examination and uh, giving treatment. And for the radiologists, they are also uh, very insufficient radiologists, although uh, we, we, can, uh, we can supply the CT scans both at the private and public sectors. So telemedicine can also help in the radiology sector also. And uh, lab testing also should be, uh, facility should be added in the uh, ambulances, I think. The use of telemedicine improves the pre-hospital diagnosis of stroke, and it can enhance the supervision of delivery RD, IV RDP in acute ischemic stroke, and as we can uh, uh, enhance the early diagnosis, if available, integrating stroke specialists in pre-hospital stroke response team significantly, and this can uh, reduce the time of treatment. In the post-hospital sector, uh, recovery and prevention of stroke recurrence after admission of the patient and stabilization of the patient and long-term care of the patient is very important. And the main focus for the patient stroke recovery is outcome improvement and secondary stroke prevention. And it should also be improvement. And the another important uh, plan for our future in the, 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 the specialized center is the Specialist Hospital of Neurology and Cardiology, uh, which is 500 bedded, and it will be open in the uh, Yango uh, with the aid of the uh, Jap Japan, and which was originally planned to open in uh, early 2023, but uh, because of the COVID, it was uh, delayed. If uh, we could uh, open uh, this hospital, uh, it will have a cat lab, uh, which can be used both by the cardiologists and uh, neurologists. 
and, and it will give a great step towards the IV thrombectomy in the very near future. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for the kind attention. Thank you very much, for Professor Sang, for your presentations of the updates of stroke neck workplace, practice and stroke uh, care activity plan in the public sector. So, uh, we did uh, uh, the stroke services, acute stroke services, and thrombolysis since uh, uh, since 2015, we are working together uh, to, uh, uh, to help the people. Yeah. The next agenda is the stroke care services in Nima uh, for private sectors, past, present, and future. By Professor Senior Nya E, who is a senior consultant, professor, and senior consultant, is a previously work in the uh, General Hospitals, Neurology Department, and, and he is also the advisor of education sessions of the NIMA Neurology uh, Society. So, uh, Professor Sain, please start our uh, stroke care services. Thank you, Mama, for your kind introduction. And good morning. Uh, all my colleagues and ladies and gentlemen and the Professor Tang uh, for joining our meeting today. So today I will I will talk about on the stroke care services in uh, in our country uh, in the private sector, past, present, and future. Uh, as we all know, that stroke is the leading cause of death and dis disability worldwide. And the, uh, as you can see here in the uh, performance quartiles uh, by the surveillance strategies, uh, model for stroke uh, services delivery vary uh, considerably from region to region. And it depends on the uh, availability of the resources, including human resources, access to healthcare facilities, access to diagnostic and laboratory services, and access to medications and also transportation. And it is also recognized that the, in lower and middle income countries, there is a wide range of accessibility to some of the even most basic healthcare services, and our country, Myanmar, is not an exception. Uh, here, as you can see here, that the, um, that the white color showing our uh, country territory, and it is because of the, that no data uh, can be provided. Uh, as uh, Professor Sang mentioned in his presentation that we do, do not have the uh, data registry across the country. This is a sad thing. And what are the benefits of the organized stroke care? The mortality and morbidity from stroke uh, could be significantly reduced to the organized stroke care. Uh, including the implementation of the evidence-based practice guidelines and adoption of the continuous quality improvement uh, philosophy and the programs. So why we are uh, giving the, uh, the, the best possible treatment to, to all our patients, uh, depending on what on the uh, availability of the resources of our country and adapted to our local availability in the region of the country, uh, but at the same time, uh, to improve our care, uh, we must know the, what, are these, what is the standards of care. So standards of care are the basis of comparison in measuring or judging the capacity, quality, content, or extent of the particular object of the activity. So standards can be considered as the basic requirements of the healthcare and are usually defined within the policy procedures and, and standard of the, uh, the documents. So standards of the care specify the minimum acceptable characteristic of what constitutes quality care. So according to the uh, Global Stroke Action uh, Plan, a guideline and the roadmap, uh, which is uh, published in the 2014 by the World Stroke Organization. According to the, well, the, in the uh, treatment of the patient with the stroke, the continuum of the stroke care uh, should include the pre-hospital and the emergency care, acute inpatient stroke care, 
secondary stroke prevention, stroke rehabilitation and community, uh, reintegration and long-term recovery. So in that particular uh, continuum that the stroke care, uh, that foundation we should give these, according to the standards of the care that we, we must provide the minimal head care. On top of that, if the quality is better, then uh, it will be the essential stroke care services. And if we have the advanced facilities and like the comprehensive stroke center, then that would be the advanced stroke care services. Okay, so what about the past? So, uh in the minimum, uh, the stroke services, what are the standards? So the in the minimum stroke services, there is no access to the diagnosis services or hospital care. So uh, before 2016, we do not have good access to the diagnosis services in the majority of the uh, regions of our country, except in the capital cities. And we have a variable access to healthcare workers like nurses or lay workers. Uh, and given the training, uh, of the uh, stroke risk factor assessment and training in the basic rehabilitation techniques and basic training in the swallow screen and dysphagia management. And uh, as well as very limited access to the physician to provide the assess assessment skill development to in providing the basic stroke risk factor assessment, risk factor management, and also uh, training in the basic rehabilitation techniques, mobility, positioning, and uh, also, basic training in the swallowing screen and dysphagia management and temperature harmony, which, which are also very important part of the stroke management. And care provided in the local, local communities uh, are without a co a proper coordination. And limited access to the most basic lifestyle preventive uh, advice and access to the internet, access to the mobile stroke education, access to the mobile tools such as the stroke risk meter are also lacking. So, uh, so pre the minimum stroke services uh, we can provide uh, is the, uh, the, the best in the capital, even for the minimum stroke service. And the rural area are still lacking uh, in the past and, and also up to now. So what about the, pres the present? The essential stroke services uh, should have access to the basic diagnostic services like the laboratory blood test, ECG, CT, CT NGO, echo, Doppler ultrasound, and Holter monitor, et cetera. And the, the services must, must have the limit, uh, uh, has the uh, limited access to the emergency medical services like the training of the ambulance crews to identify the stroke sign using the fast uh, mnemonic, work with the ambulance system to have the stroke identified as a high priority transport emergency in addition to the trauma and the uh, obstetrical crisis. So regarding the acute uh, stroke service and resource availability in essential stroke service, uh, ha should have the access to the nurses and nursing assessment with the stroke training. So in the primary care setting, acute care setting, advanced practice nurses and nurses practitioners should be available. And access to the physician with the stroke expertise, although non not necessarily the stroke specialist, and the service should provide the general family primary care physician, uh, must have the neurologist, neurosurgeon, internist, cardiologist, geriatrician, emergency medicine specialist, physical and rehabilitation medicine intensivist, and also uh, should have access to the stroke specialist to the tele stroke modalities and tele radiology. And also, uh, it should have uh, mem the team with the members of the interdisciplinary stroke team. Uh, in, including the physician with the stroke expertise, stroke nurses, uh, pharmacists, social worker, etc. 
Regarding with the acute stroke care, essential stroke service should provide the, should have the protocols for rapid evaluation and diagnosis of the stroke patient and access to the acute thrombolysis with the uh, intravenous uh, TPA. And we should have the protocol to guide acute stroke care based on the best practice guideline, like the medical analysis assessment on the history, swallow screen, nutrition, hydration, functional status, level of dependency, skin integrity, power and bladder care. So this is, uh, I would like to share the uh, one example of the thrombolysis therapy, which is done at the IU International Hospital where I work. And just to highlight that the importance of the uh, door to needle time and the and why we need the efficient team and the efficient uh, uh, time management uh, to have the good door to needle time for the better stroke outcome. So this is in the ICU where we put the patient uh, after the CT scan and to start the uh, uh, throm thrombolysis therapy. So every team member has to do their own respective uh, work and job and to, to, to have the uh, uh, efficient time management. So sometimes, because as uh, we mentioned earlier, uh, we do have the uh, very limited number of the neurologists who can cover uh, the hot to the individual private hospital and to be available 24 seven, sometimes we have to uh, use the, the tele-stroke medicine uh, via viral application, uh, which uh, we mostly use here in our country for the uh, uh, faster communication. That is another example, which we give the, uh, which we do the assessment and analysis scoring through viral application because the none of the neurologists is, uh, was available at the time in person. Uh, so that the uh, the immediate call uh, stroke alert to the neurologist and the neurologist assess the uh, the patient and do the history taking uh, through viral application. Why other members of the team though they are uh, explain the patient about the uh, the benefits and risks of the thrombolysis therapy and take consent and why. Uh, the other team members are preparing uh, uh, to send uh, preparing for the uh, other uh, part of the thrombolysis therapy. Although this is that the viral application is not the perfect application to do this, but uh, because of the our very limited resource uh, uh, resource limitation, uh, we do not have other choice. Uh, so that for the time being, we have to do uh, that uh, through uh, that viral application, but which is still, but which is uh, still uh, very useful, uh, especially uh, because that uh, during the COVID and the uh, after COVID, uh, because of the political unrest, uh, there are curfew. So uh, the patient, although the patient can come to the hospital straight away with the ambulance, but the neurologist or the uh, specialist cannot go to the hospital in person. Uh, so we have to use uh, uh, more of that the uh, telecommunication. So when we come back to the other part of the uh, uh, essential stroke services, 
Also, it should have the access to the acute inpatient stroke care and also the stroke unit care should be provided. And uh, the stroke unit care should be, uh, is defined as the geographically defined unit dedicated to the care of the stroke patients or model of the clustering the stroke patients. So this is an example of the uh, another uh, private hospital, uh, Asia Rai Hospital, which has the uh, certified uh, ac uh, acknowledgement uh, from the ministry of health to have to do the uh, to open the stroke unit and thrombolysis treatment. I think this uh, hospital is the, the first hospital uh, in our country who got the uh, recognition from the MOH approval. So this is a team and they have the stroke HGU and that is the uh, stroke HGU and the uh, setting. And the, they have the uh, members of the interdisciplinary stroke team. And to that essential stroke service should have the protocols to guide the acute stroke care based on their best practice guidelines. This is an example of the uh, st uh, standard operation uh, procedure from the uh, IU International Hospital. So uh, regarding the stroke units, uh, in the private sector, we still have, although we have the uh, stroke ready, uh, although we have the hospitals with the CT scans and the uh, uh, and the stroke team, uh, but uh, we have we still have very uh, limited number of the stroke units because of the uh, slow and the complicated process for, for approval from the Ministry of the Health, and it's even uh, worse uh, during COVID and after the COVID because of the uh, political instability. And regarding the thrombolysis therapy in private sector, uh, that thrombolysis therapy service was available since 2018. And the uh, start with the HRI hospital now is currently available in the six private hospitals in Yango. Uh, but according to my uh, the colleague from Mendeley, when I inquire about the thrombolysis service in Mendeley, uh, he said that the there is uh, no thrombolysis therapy yet available in the private sector because of the uh, lacking of the uh, uh, process in the approval to get the approval from the Ministry of the Health. So that diagram, that table shows the uh, number of the thrombolysis cases uh, per each uh, hospital, six hospital in the Yangon. And the uh, HRI has the, uh, the biggest number of the thrombolysis therapy. Uh, the reason is that the, uh, in HRI hospital, there is one, uh, uh, two available uh, oncologists which can cover 24 seven. And one uh, that uh, two out of two, one residential neurologist, he, he uh, lives quite close to the hospital and the, he is very enthusiastic and very hardworking in giving the stroke care services. And, the, and I do as the second on call why he, he, he is away and I cover the, uh, that the uh, emergency call for the stroke patient. So that is the reason why uh, we, we do have the, uh, the biggest number of the thrombolytic cases compared to the other uh, uh, hospitals. But uh, as you can see here, although uh, we have the COVID uh, problem and also post-COVID the political problem, we still have the uh, number of the uh, thrombolysis cases also uh, few though. And the challenges, uh, when I asked about my colleagues who are doing thrombolysis therapy in other hospital where I do not work, and according to them, uh, most of most of us has the more or less the same challenges, uh, like the that uh, the, the door to needle time is uh, the the door to needle time is longer than sixty minutes in the I think uh, about the uh, thirty to forty percent of the patients. It is because of not the uh, problem from the team. Uh, the problem is mainly because of the traffic. And the another thing is that the uh, sometimes it uh, uh, because of the delay uh, and patients' family uh, they take time to give their consent for the IV thrombolysis because which is not uh, not familiar with them. So we need to explain uh, twice and thrice uh, what are the benefits, what are the risks, and some 
uh, family refuse uh, to go ahead with the thrombolysis because they are, are scared of the having the uh, intracranial hemorrhage because of the uh, treatment. And another big challenge we have to face is the financial constraints. And another challenge is that although the, sometimes the patient come to the hospital uh, in time, uh, but the, the, the first hospital, the first entry point they go uh, cannot provide the uh, thrombolysis therapy. So the patient has to be referred to the another hospital and that stroke networking for the hospital networking is not that well established. So uh, that also make delay in the getting the thrombolysis therapy in time. So the, the challenges we have are more or less the same across the, all the uh, stroke ready hospital for the thrombolysis. And another thing uh, is that the, uh, because uh, most of the, our neurologists, uh, they are from the uh, government, they are working at the government sector. So why they are in the government sector, they cannot go outside and do the thrombolysis therapy for the patient in person. And we have the only very limited number of the uh, neur neurologists who work in the private sector. So to have the 24 seven coverage is really, really uh, difficult for us and it's a big challenge we have to overcome and I will discuss about in the future plan. So to continue with the essential stroke services, we must have also have the access to the stroke prevention therapy uh, and also the stroke training program for all levels of the healthcare providers and also should have access to the secondary prevention services like the risk factor assessment, blood pressure management, and the playlist, and the coagulation, patient family education, skill training, and ongoing rehabilitation, cognition assessment, depression assessment, and et cetera. So to, uh, in, for the private sector, uh, currently in the capital city like Yango, uh, we have the, the, we can provide the essential uh, stroke service care, and because we can do the uh, we we can do the training for the human resource development and the capacity building, and that the that is also in the IU uh, hospital, and we we could give the training uh, uh, two times in 2020 and 2022, and the ongoing training in CME. So they are just uh, the, the the photographs are the. Uh, uh, I chose uh, just to share how uh, that private sector is working and what the level of the uh, stroke care we can provide. Uh, just a few examples, because I cannot uh, uh, ask the uh, photos from the other hospital uh, who are also doing uh, thrombolysis therapy and also who uh, the, the hospital which can provide the uh, essential stroke care services. So that photo means the just the uh, uh, examples of what we can provide. And also for the rehabilitation care is also very important. So uh, if we have to uh, provide the essential stroke service, we must have the protocols to guide the stroke rehabilitation. And also we must have the interdisciplinary meeting. That is the area where we are lacking because of the uh, limited time and limited uh, number of the neurologists and the this is very difficult in the private sector to meet up with the, all the uh, interdisciplinary members to have the weekly meeting because of the nature of the our uh, that the practice busy practice in the private and also in the government hospital as well the patient and family education skill training and involvement in the care plan is also important that we need to provide in the if we have to give the essential stroke services and distress planning is as well so those most areas are in place in the uh, uh, private sector in the big cities. So that is the uh, example of the health education, which happened in the uh, IU International Hospital. And that the, for the patient awareness in the information, the stroke information booklet uh, provided uh, uh, from the Asia Rye Hospital to the patient before they, they are discharged. And the stroke awareness activities and also uh, in the TV program as well. And for the rehabilitation, uh, not only the rehabilitation therapy, we are going to, we need to go into, we need to provide also the services we should improve. And as well as the uh, rehabilitation stroke unit care is also the essential part of the essential stroke care services. 
So those are a few examples of the uh, uh, access to the rehabilitation services in the private sector. So uh, regarding the present uh, uh, situation in providing the stroke care services, uh, the essential stroke care services is only available in the capitals like the Yango and Mandalay because and the essential stroke service care services is still very limited in these cities and it's not available at all in townships and rural areas because of the following reason in summary that CT scan is only available in the capital cities and only a few number of the big cities and the limited number of the neurologists, rehabilitation physician, no trained physician for stroke care and stroke nurse and lack of the basic diagnostic tests and the scarce rehabilitation care in those townships and rural areas and as well as in the uh, medium or large cities of the other part of the country except for the capital cities. And the we also have, uh, we are also lacking of the post-stroke care and secondary prevention, which is also very, very important part of the uh, stroke care services. So after the minimal stroke care and the essential stroke care, what is the next level or the top level of the stroke care service is the advanced stroke care services where we should provide access to the advanced diagnostic services like MRI, MRA, CT perfusion scans, prolonged ECG monitoring devices, etc. And we should have the access to the physician with stroke expertise. So here, the difference is that the although we are neurologists, but uh, if we only when we have the proper uh, training, uh, to a certain period of the time for the stroke training that we should be called as the uh, neurologist with the uh, stroke expertise or like that. So uh, here, uh, because of the many factors then we, we do not have the, uh, that the uh, neurologist with the uh, uh, stroke or expertise, I mean the uh, uh, well-trained, uh, I have to say so. And the, because we must have the program to develop and maintain the core competency in the stroke care. So including that the interventional therapy like intraarteria and thrombectomy, uh, what uh, Prof Tang mentioned, uh, explained the process and the, uh, the benefits in his uh, earlier presentation. And we must have access to the advanced intervention. So antiplase, endovascular thrombectomy, neurosurgery, uh, 24-7 cover, hemicrinotomy, and the stroke unit care, and also products to reverse coagulopathy in case if something happened uh, like the intracerebral hemorrhage after thrombolysis therapy. And advanced stroke care services also should have a community program for recovery after stroke, like the uh, in, during inpatient uh, treatment, uh, we must have the inpatient stroke rehabilitation beds and early support the discharge program, organize outpatient stroke rehabilitation services and local or private community stroke rehabilitation program, patient and family support program, stroke prevention clinics and vocational rehabilitation. And also data collection strategy and mechanisms are very important. Now, this one is the uh, major part of uh, uh, our necessity, which we lack uh, in, in the whole process of the stroke care services because uh, we do not have the, uh, uh, the, the, the proper data registry so that we cannot provide uh, the accurate data for the, what are the, how many percentage uh, patients are having stroke and what are the incidents, what are the prevalence the, uh, across the country. Although we do have the limited number of the uh, registry, registry in our own individual hospital where we practice. And also the advanced stroke care services must have the fully coordinated stroke care provided across geographically discrete region. So it means that uh, we must have the stroke referral pathways, uh, which define the moving the patients from uh, lower down and up, up and down. If the, the patient has the, uh, is the candidate for the thrombolysis therapy or thrombectomy. And if the patient is the, uh, the hospital where uh, the service is not available and we should have the uh, the care pathway to refer to the patient to the nearby uh, the stand, uh, stroke ready hospital. And when the, the procedure is finished and the patient care should be stepped down and moved back to the, uh, the previous hospital. So that, that, that hosp the, the examples like that. 
So it should be the fully coordinated stroke care. And they call, that, that's why coordinated uh, referral system is very important and to provide telestroke consultations to a smaller or more rural centers from the uh, comprehensive stroke center like the satellite uh, 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 care, uh, which cover to the uh, smaller and the not uh, stroke ready hospitals via the, uh, the uh, comprehensive stroke center with a stroke team. So here the ambulance fibers agreements are also very important. Uh, repatriation agreement are also very uh, necessary and access to the protocol for care of the stroke patients, swallowing assessment, then the, the whole set of the uh, acute stroke care setup should be uh, in place to give the uh, coordinated stroke care and the referral system. So this <clears throat> photo I chose just to uh, show you the to uh, to reflect our services now we can provide to the people of our own country in the private sector. So uh, that is minimum stroke care service, which we can provide for the time being. Uh, in the majority of the regions of our uh, country, and uh, we could provide the a limited. Uh, I have to say limited essential short care services, although uh, we can provide the better quality essential short care services in the capital city like Yango, Mandalay, and Nibidor, but in the other big cities and the uh, and we we have only we still have only limited essential short care services, and we need to move on to the advanced short care services. So when we look at this uh, half of the half fill uh, water to that, that, that glass, and that is a two way we can look at this, that the, shall we see the half empty? And the here like the, because it's the services now we are providing are still very limited. It's only the uh, minimal care and so that there are many more steps, we need to do more half empty. It seems like it's impossible. But at the same time, if we look at that way that, okay, now we have started, we have the minimal essential service and we are, we can provide uh, that the essential service in, the, in some areas of the, across the country, although limited, but we can still improve on that and then moving forward. So that's like the uh, half fill uh, glass. Right. So the beginning is the most important part of the work, uh, according to the Plato. And the, so we will oversee or we would like to foresee what the stroke services in our private sector in the future with a positive thinking. I have to say so. And the, the challenges, as I mentioned, uh, partially in, the, in my previous slide, there are no coordinated stroke networking, uh, lack of availability of the stroke team and facilities of the stroke care, uh, lack of uh, knowledge and stroke awareness up to the public, and the financial issues is also very, very important. And the, because it is a private sector, we do not have the, uh, there will be not be government sponsor or government funding funded so and the patients has to uh, use out of their own pockets and we still have very limited uh, medical insurance system so that financial issues is a big headache for us although sometimes the patient come to the private sector uh, within the golden hour and yet because of the financial issues we cannot give the intravenous thrombolysis and the proper stroke care. Although we can transfer the patient or refer the patient to the government sector, uh, but the public sector, uh, there, there are uh, only very limited number of the stroke ready hospital with uh, very limited human resources, especially more so during that the COVID and post COVID uh, political unrest uh, uh, era. So, so those are the challenges we have. So if we do want to improve our service in the future, 
what do we need to do? So in, in, in short, we need adaptation of the washroom because we must know what are the standards of the care, what are the standards of the care uh, given to the uh, patients, which we, we must provide at, at least minimal service care and to improve further. And based on the international guideline and the guidance like the washroom uh, organization global stroke care guideline and action plan, and we need to, uh, produce the stroke services framework for the core elements of the stroke care across the uh, country and to have the continuum of the stroke care. So the vision uh, is the, to, to provide better quality stroke care services in the private sector. And the missions are that, because here, as you can see here, we have the huge, still a huge gap uh, from uh, minimal stroke care to the essential stroke care services to the uh, advanced stroke care services. So uh, we have to fill up the gaps and the, we have to move forward. And the, the gaps we have to fill is the, in the, uh, the example of the areas we, we need to fill up is that we really need the stakeholders involvement and government support. Without that, we cannot move forward. And as Professor Sang mentioned in his slides that public private partnership is very important because uh, we do have the uh, very limited number of the neurologists who work in the private sector. So without the involvement and the team approach from the uh, public sector, we cannot expand our the thrombolysis therapy and uh, as well as the interventional therapy, uh, interventional in intervention. And that's why we need to uh, improve more uh, on the human resource development and capacity building and we have to use more on the technology and the daily stroke and coordination across the regions and to improve referral pathway, which we should uh, in, uh, include the uh, private sector association, hospital association, and also the stakeholders from the, uh, and the uh, including the hospital owners and the, the business partners like that. So these are the few examples of the gaps. So action plans, implementation, evaluation are very, very important. Then here, I would like to mention uh, a few examples here. The mobile, we, we should have the mobile stroke trainer team, which include the uh, neurologist, ED physician, rehab physician, intensivist, and radiologist, and also the stroke trained nurses and rehabilitation uh, uh, personnel so that that trainer team should move around the region or the, the, the cities to train uh, more uh, uh, human resources for the uh, stroke teams, for the stroke ready hospital in the region. And that, so that we can expand our thrombolysis service by the action of that, we must, uh, we shouldn't, we should not, practice or we cannot practice uh, like the standalone neurologist. If we have the group practice of neurologists and collaboration between the public and the private sector so that we can provide 24 seven on call for thrombolysis and so that we have to use more of the deadly stroke for the efficient and timely thrombolysis. And we should have the proper referral pathway uh, from non-stroke ready hospital to the stroke ready hospital. Or well, those are the examples of the action plans and implementation which we can do right now. Although we cannot solve the problems of the financial issues and other fundraising issues, uh, which are out of our control at, for the time being because of the very bad situation of the uh, uh, country, uh, for country economy and the, the political unrest. So uh, we can succeed. So no doubt about that, but we don't know yet how long we need to take but every single step to move forward is very important. So with that stroke care team, and we uh, positively believe that we can give the better quality stroke care day by day, year after year. And the Prof Tang gave us the, uh, a good example of how they improve uh, from the uh, 2010 services up to now and how they beautifully grow in giving rise to the 
uh, showcase services to the people of their country. And that is also uh, very motivational, inspiration for us. And uh, we must, uh, our neurologists must collaborate and work together to move forward and to give the best quality, the best available uh, showcase services to the people of our country, Myanmar. With that, I would like to conclude my talk and thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation, Professor Semina. As uh, you uh, know about the difficulties and hindrance of the acute uh, stroke care unit to develop in, uh, in our government sectors previously, and also I um, congratulate you to uh, um, to set up the uh, from uh, the stroke care unit, acute stroke care units, uh, and support in the private hospitals because in our country there is a limited number of the neurologists, not only the neurologists, all the uh, the well equipped and well-orientated, well-collaborative teams. Uh, the stroke care uh, team uh, is a very essential uh, for the every hospitals and also uh, uh, need to uh, participate, the, uh, participate either public uh, uh, and private partnership and also needs the support of the stakeholders and also WHO. Previous two years, two years ago, uh, the WHO and all the World Stroke Organization, all the uh, the organizations, they are focused on the uh, more on the metabolic diseases as like the, uh, the which leads to the stroke, or uh, but they are more pronounced on the infectious disease like the COVID, and so the post COVID has uh, also complicated uh, leads to the uh, complicated into the uh, the stroke. Uh, uh, acute strokes. Uh, so uh, next, uh, uh, the future, we need the more and more these collaborations uh, between the infectious and the metabolic diseases as to become a stroke. So uh, thank you very much. You uh, reduce the burdens of the uh, uh, public sectors uh, to with your effort to the uh, to become the uh, the stroke care unit uh, in the private sectors. Thank you. So now, so uh, we have a, a floor is open for discussions. Um, and also we would like to uh, answer the questions. Now we have the, some questions uh, uh, everyone can answer. Also Professor Nguyen. Uh, the first question is if the patients come to clinic with a stroke system, Symptoms less than 24 hours, should we consider it TPA or stroke? I, no, not TPA, no. not the, or the yeah. DIA or stroke, and, and how to uh, proceed the management. So Prof, can, can, I can, can you answer? Can I answer? Do you want to answer yeah. this? Uh, for me, if the patient um, uh, be less than 24 hours, I think it's most of cases we cannot do a TBA because the TBA is a routinely only four and a half hours. In my center, we can, we can extend the time for TBA for, for two situations. The first thing, we uh, the patients outside of 20 uh, from four and a half hour to nine hour a wake up stroke. If we got the um, we got the um, uh, mismatch between the flare and DWI, or you have perfusion mismatch if you go to a perfusion, and one other case we can extend the TBA beyond four and a half hour when the patient occlusion, the basic occlusion. Uh, the patient with basic occlusion right now, we can extend uh, more, maybe maybe uh, more than 12 hours uh, because it's, uh, we found 
uh, IVTBA for um, basal occlusion is safety because it's uh, the 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 percentage for bleeding is is significant lower than um, than MCA infarction. Uh, if you can do thrombectomy, I I think uh, you can extend TBA for basal occlusion. And basal occlusion, you know, the prediction very poor if you do nothing. From my experience, I have a lot of cases with basal occlusion and we treat successful with the TBA uh, beyond uh, 12 hours. Uh, so for most of cases, uh, modern, modern TPA hour, we do and less than 24 hour, what we do uh, in my talk, I, I extend the time for treatment uh, for until 24 hours. So we can do uh, uh, CD, CD perfusion or MRI, MRI perfusion. And if the patient got a pollution of large vessel uh, and then uh, with the patient had a mismatch, between perfusion and DWI, we can do thrombectomy for a patient uh, until uh, 24 hours. In uh, very select cases, we have, a, uh, we have a, some cases we, we published uh, already uh, with a young patient we have, uh, come with us beyond 24 hours, maybe 36 hours, but we do the uh, MRI perfusion, which we found a big mismatch, significant mismatch between DWI and, and perfusion. So this case, we can, we can extend uh, with a very careful consideration. I think we, um, and now we have a, a lot of uh, uh, a big trial to do uh, for extend uh, more uh, time uh, for a patient with uh, perfusion, the DFUI mismatch. These are my opinion, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, what about the uh, practice in the uh, private hospital, Professor Sanyai? How do you proceed for this symptoms? And, and I think we have a good stop protocol uh, in our country as well. And how do you practice? Uh, I think the the question means TIA. Yes, I mean uh, TIA. <laughs> TIA. So. Uh, so that's 24 hour is actually there's the arbitrary uh, definition. And if the, uh, the symptoms, uh, it lasts, you know, uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that if the, if the patients come in with the acute stroke symptoms, uh, like for example, like slash speech, weakness and the um, or dizziness, uh, I mean, the uh, like the posterior circulation stroke sign symptoms. So uh, we have to treat as a stroke. Uh, and, the, and we have to, uh, uh, although that the ABPC square or uh, TIA score is not perfect, but we, we still use as a guidance to manage and to decide how uh, quickly or uh, we will treat the patient. So uh, if the patient has the symptoms uh, that the persistent uh, more than uh, one hour, then the score will be higher. So for those patients, usually we treat uh, like the, the same as like the acute stroke patient. And we will not, even if the ABC square score is higher, we will not send the patient back home. We will be, uh, we will be, we, we will at, uh, hospitalize the patients and we will do the, all the workup, uh, the same as the same protocol as the acute stroke, because we don't want that, that patient to go into the established uh, infarct and stroke. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question? In your your protocol, you uh, you you routinely CT and CT angiography for all the patient uh, twenty four hours. Sorry, say again. Uh, CT and the patient uh, come with you in uh, for twenty four hours in the first twenty four hours, even in TAA. Uh, do you routinely uh, CT CTA or MRI MRI uh, for all the patients? Uh, not all patients, uh, because we in the private sector we have to uh, think about all, also the uh, their affordability. So if the patient can afford, 
And the, if that the high risk, then we usually advise the patient to have the MRI and MRI straight away uh, because, because of the many other reasons. So it may be a little bit different from the other country and a little bit from the guidelines because that the, uh, for example, now uh, when the patient has the recurrent symptoms, it's very difficult for them to come back to the hospital to have those imaging and the workup for the diagnosis and as well as the treatment. Uh, so that as, as long as the, the situation favors and we have to do things, you know, uh, uh, faster way to avoid the, and, uh, uh, the, the consequences, bad consequences, because, the, because of the traffic problem. And some, sometimes the patient, they come straight away from the, uh, for example, in Yangon, they come straight away from the uh, uh, mall district area, suburban area, uh, which our two, three hours drive to Yangon, like the Bako uh, or other area. So that, and they, they, they don't have place to stay uh, in the, uh, I mean, the Yango, so that they have to go back or, so that sometimes we have to hospitalize the patient uh, because of those social factors. So it's, de it's depending on the affordability and the other social circumstances the patient we encounter. So sometimes, although uh, we should have these uh, CT scan straight away, sometimes they cannot afford to do so. And so we have to rely sometimes on the risk assessment scoring rather than doing uh, uh, the, according to the, you know, that the evidence guideline. So those are the things. Uh, excuse me, how much for the CT scan or MRI in, uh, in Myanmar? CT is about now US. So in the lockdown, how much for this? The thing going, the thing not possible, no? Only CT plane without NGO will be- uh, $100 Yeah, around 100 US dollars. And MRI will be about 200? 200 and 200 plus. Yeah. Oh, that's the price in, in Myanmar. What about in your country? More than Nubo than Vietnam. In Vietnam, the C scan about 40, uh, less than 40 US dollars. Oh, and the MRI, MRI about less than uh, 200 US dollars. And uh, very lucky the government pay uh, 80 to 100 percent uh, for who got the insurance. And uh, that's why we, we, we need to see MRI, MRI, all the things before we, uh, we, we uh, discharge a patient. Uh, otherwise, because in my experience, I have a, a very young college. He, she is the head department uh, up, um, up the other hospital, and she got a TAA, and um, and he's recovered completely. And the neurologist there give him uh, aspirin and Plavix, and then the second day he's collapsed. Uh, when uh, referred to my hospital, we uh, we, we do the MRI, MRI. Oh, it's big infraction because it's a terminal I say in occlusion. So uh, I'm very careful with uh, who's with the TA or minor stroke because it's uh, maybe disaster uh, if the patient got the large vessel occlusion. So that's the reason why. Uh, if I see patient with the, even sometimes the, you know, the scoring system is not that high, but we have to do that CT, at least CT scan straight away if the patient can afford. Yeah, those are the reason. And what, what about the uh, major the medical insurance and reimbursement from uh, government? And yeah. what the coverage of the, uh, med who, the patients who are who have the medical insurance in your country, I mean uh, the in the government all, sector who come to your government se sector. On the people, we the government encourage on the people should oh. buy the insurance. Be oh. very cheap, very very cheap. I, I see, think I about less than fifty dollars for year okay. per person. So it's available for everybody. But unfortunately. We have uh, still have uh, about thirty percent of people still not uh, get the in government insurance, but just only forty dollars or fifty dollars, but they don't have money. But, uh, so that's why we 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 don't have any problem with about seventy percent 
uh, got the insulin, we can do a TPA. Even you can either you can use a, a thrombectomy because thrombectomy the government pay fifty percent. Uh, so, so that's why we 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 uh, we can over over overcome uh, the cost uh, in Vietnam. Yeah. That's very fortunate. So this program I had you from the four years ago. Uh, that's why I'm uh, very appreciated for the one dollar per month. You know, uh, I had that. That's why uh, at that time I did the protocol to tell my ministers how to do like that. But unfortunately, now it is not still not at the me medical insurance system in our country. So thank you. Uh, so what about the Professor Sang Wu in the uh, private sectors, uh, uh, public, I, we did the protocol for that for the TIA and the risk factors assessments and also, and then we do the erotic Doppler like that, yeah? Uh, for patients uh, presenting with the signs and symptoms of uh, the motor neuro neurological deficit, uh, we assess with the, the, the NIHSS, and if the score is high, we did uh, according to our uh, guideline. And if there is uh, uh, no contraindication, it will, it is uh, within a 4.5 hour, uh, he, he or she will get the, the RTPA. And uh, if more, uh, less, uh, if uh, more than 4.5 hour, uh, he will get the 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 any playlist, but if uh the signs and symptoms uh an IHSS is uh very low and signs symptoms are uh, recover after forty uh, twenty four hour, uh we also have uh, the the same although we are a public uh, sector uh, the problem is uh, not only the many uh, but the the hr and the workload of the the radiology department uh, there are hundreds of uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, cases to do the radiography each day and uh, radio uh, hr and all, also the machine are not uh, ready to do but for the 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 the, uh, the CG scan uh, at the 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 admission at the ER. Uh, also, the assessment by the MRI and also MRE and the angiography are also the 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 uh, more difficult ones, and it will take another uh, two or three days. Although the prices uh, will be cheaper than the private. Thank you, Professor Sao. The next question is Do you do CT, then CTA, then MRI to all patients? So, Pro, um, thank you for the question. Uh, we, we do routinely CT, CTA, and uh, for all the patients coming up in six hours. Plus six hours, zero to six hours, we do all the cases, CT and CT angiography. And for the patient beyond six hours, we do uh, either CT, CTA, CT perfusion, or MRI, MRI, MRI perfusion. Uh, for those of the patient uh, come with us, arrive to the hospital, less than six hours, especially less than four and a half hours, we don't need MRI anymore. In case it's the patient very special situation, if the patient uh, have a, a stroke um, um, uh, weakness after uh, uh, after seizure, uh, after uh, migraine, uh, maybe we consider oh maybe stroke mimic, or we can uh, we can do um, MRI for a, a very special situation. But most of the cases, CT, CTA, and CT perfusion. I think is the best protocol for save the time. Because uh, in Vietnam, we have a lot of uh, private hospitals. They prefer MRI than CT scans. And they do the MRI protocol for all the patient, uh, despite they come can come is early window. 
for me, I I I I don't uh, I don't I, I don't ask them. I and and I persuade them to don't do the MRI because the cost MRI is much uh, is more expensive. And the second one is the patient cannot cooperate. The coma, you we cannot do uh, MRI. And the, 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 sorry, and other things. MRI, we don't know. We have a lot of patients with negative MRI, very small infection in pontai or prostate circulation. Negative MRI, despite they have a left side or right side weakness, what we can do? If we do a B MRI, there's no stroke because it's, it's an MRI normal. We cannot do a TBA. So it's make you a lot, little bit confused. And for those, we have a, some case when we do repeat MRI and the show small infraction in a point time. So, uh, so we 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 not courage the the, uh, the stroke unit do MRI replace for C scan. Other thing is microblade. Is now we do MRI. Some cases we we saw a lot of microblade, and a lot of doctor they don't say oh they don't want. Uh, they don't, don't want uh, thrombolysis for set of okay, with microblade, but we don't have evidence to uh, to exclude the TBA for uh, those with who's with a uh, microblade. So we do C scan. It's normal. There's no bleeding. You can use a TBA. It's easy, easy to make the decision. So we always prefer CT CTA for uh, four and a half hours window patient. Thank you. Uh, I do agree with you, Professor, because in our country, there's a limited number of the MRI machines in the private hospitals and also the public hospitals. Uh, so we do the CT and CTA first, and then we need, uh, uh, if we need and we suspect to, uh, so we, we will do the MRI and MRI also. And also it depends on the um, uh, then uh, depends on the uh, patient's conditions and uh, the patient's affordability. Okay. Is there any comment from the Professor Singh and Professor Sang? So thank you. Another question is uh, how can you differentiate stroke and hemiplegic migraine at first presentation? So Prof, yeah. I think the patient have a migraine should be the history. Uh, if the patient have history of migraine and the patient have a uh, hemiplegic after um, episode of uh, headache, maybe we consider. Uh, but I think it's rare, uh, rare to see. And in the, instead of that, that case, we prefer MRI more than C scan because, because you want to confirm uh, maybe it's, uh, a vaso spasm can cause uh, the stroke symptom. So that's the case we, we, uh, we can do the MRI. Uh, to, if we if we do an MRI, you can show you, oh, it, it's, a, it's really infection. You can go to the TPA. Uh, yeah, this case okay. we need the MRI to exclude the migraine, uh, stroke migraine. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The happy, hem, hemiplegic migraine has a, a tool like that uh, because there is a symptoms and histories and uh, also like the TIA, like it comes and goes, comes and goes, and also depend on the risk factors. Uh, so we can do the uh, on the, uh, the differentiations and that. Uh, what about other professors? Do you have any comments on that? Say? Uh, no, no comments because <clears throat> as uh, both of you have mentioned. What is the management of water shot in park? Any unique, any unique treatment? Prof, yeah. uh, I think for water shed, water shed in fact, that means the patient maybe have a mechanism of uh, uh, cardioembolism or uh, a severe stenosis of uh, 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 intracryostenosis or either for um, carotid uh, uh, cut stenosis. But for acute stroke treatment, we don't mind. It's watershed or not watershed. It'll be go to four and a half hours, go to TBA. 
And when we do, uh, but uh, we have a lot of experience with the patient have uh, see very severe, very severe, nearly occlusion of um, intracranial uh, arteries or uh, carotid arteries. Uh, what we do, we do a TBA and then we do the, uh, uh, we send the patient go to cat lab uh, for thrombectomy. If the patient just only severe stenosis, we can do uh, angioplasty. Uh, we we don't we don't we don't do uh, uh, stenting in the acute state because very very uh, very uh, dangerous because when we put the stent in the in the acute state the patient still not uh, protected by antiplatelet uh, still not ha have aspirin or plavix so the occlusion after stenting is very high so uh, we can do angioplasty uh, just use the balloon. Uh, to uh, extend um, the vessels, and then we can repeat again, a bit again, uh, after 24 hours to see how how is the vessel. Uh, uh, if the patient is three stenosis, we can consider a stenting uh, after uh, after uh, the patient have already protected by aspirin and plavix, uh, and. Um, for the case, uh, we uh, beyond acute stroke treatment, I think we need to uh, to careful for uh, all the patient with severe stenosis. Uh, for extra cryo stenosis, we prefer to do standing uh, among uh, with within uh, the first two weeks after the uh, the onset. Uh, for the dose of uh, intra cryo stenosis, we don't do you know, we don't do. Uh, uh, standing because it's uh, after some breast cryo. If you do standing for intra cryo arteries, it's more da damage. It's easy to damage the patient. I don't do the, the, the intra cryo standing. We just use uh, uh, do anti uh, aspirin and plavix and um, high dose of statin. We, we, we recommend you use a high dose of statin, it's very useful. And uh, recently, uh, we got the, the chance to. It's published in NEGM. Uh, for those is uh, uh, resistant with uh, um, colic blood well, we can use aspirin and tea together. It's better, uh, better outcome for those with uh, resistant and colic blood well. But I, I just remind, if you use aspirin and tea together, you cannot go further than uh, 30, uh, 30 days because it's more dangerous. Uh, tea together is more bleeding uh, than uh, colic blood well. Uh, thank you. Uh, what about the role of uh, uh, RTP in uh, water chart infarct? Do you have any experience? Because uh, this is only for the MC infarct, isn't it? I think uh, uh, other than the anti playlet. Yeah. From Texas. I think if, uh, the first thing we do the TBA, and then uh, we we need to wait for at least the, after twenty four hours. We repeat the C scan. And MRI to see how big the how big the, the infarction. If the the infarction is small, and the patient is a completely recover or dramatical recover, we can use the aspirin and plavix. Otherwise, otherwise we don't do uh, a dual antiplatelet in acute time because it's uh, it's increase the bleeding. Uh, so uh, after twenty four hour, when we see the MRI and you see oh it's a big or moderate uh, infarction. I think you forget the uh, aspirin and plavix. I think it's only keep one is uh, enough. Thank you. And another question is, uh, how should we do chronic coronary syn syndrome patient with a previous MI with one year, having AF with CKD stage 3B, non called suspected stroke, how to manage this to outline? Professor Nguyen, chronic coronary syndrome with a previous MI within one year, and the patient has AF and CKD stage three with a stroke. Uh, uh, thank you. I, th I think it's uh, uh, for, um, for contraindication for TBA is include the patient recently MI, I think it's three months. Uh, so the patient is uh, already one year. I think yeah. we, we uh, the patient on completely uh, have uh, indication for TA. If the patient come with us, uh, 
we in in uh, four and a half hours we can consider because it's a uh, the MRI is previously one years ago, so we can do it. Uh, for the patient with AF, if the patient have AF, we have to expect a large occlusion, uh, uh, large vessel occlusion. So we have to prepare to uh, TPA, not only TBA, but also thrombectomy. So we have to do a CT, CT, a, a CT angiography is very, uh, very fast as soon as possible because we expect uh, uh, the patient have a large vessel occlusion. Uh, for the patient, if the patient have a CKD already, we have to we have to inform the INR. Have to very careful and with very limited contrast because it's a, we use a lot of contrast. Maybe the more get the the the, the drain the no function is works. So uh, I think this patient, I think, can we if the patient have a, we can do a routine, but with caution uh, treatment. Uh, caution about the contrast. Uh, for some case, we can, uh, for some case, very, very, very typical. If the patient we have a high knee score and we got the AF and we have gaze, and so we can go directly to the cat lab. We, we forget CT angiography because it's, it's, a, it's a almost a like, uh, occlusion of M MCA. So we go directly to cat lab, we forget CT angiography. So uh, we can save the time and we can save the, the renal function too because we uh, less contrast we can use. Yeah. So in our country, we can uh, uh, do in timely with the angioplasty or the cat lab. Uh, so can, what about the, uh, uh, the anticoagulant for the atrial fibrillation? Do we continue or do we stop or do we restart? Or So because uh, the massive impact so normally we wait for the at least 10 or 14 years. It's depend on the infarct size to start the anticoagulants. So what about your idea if he or she has a, uh, has, a, uh, has a anticoagulant? So do we need to uh, uh, give or uh, to stop? Uh. If the patient on anticoagulation, yes, uh, I think I think if the new the dox one, the dox mm -hmm. one with the patient had the the blood the the, the um, dabigatran, I think now we have antidote of abigatran. We can do either as you should map, and we can do it as you should map, and after five minutes you can use TPA. So uh, that we that what we can do. Uh, if the patient we we don't have a control the antidote. We need to, uh, we need if the patient, the last dose of DOAX is uh, uh, less than uh, 48 hours, you cannot go with the TPA. We, uh, we have to, uh, to skip TPA and we go directly to thrombectomy. Uh, and uh, if the case on warfarin, in one warfarin, you have to wait for INR, uh, wait, wait for INR. But right now we do a lot of thrombectomy. So after CT, CTA, and if the patient on warfarin, we can go skip uh, TPA and we go directly to uh, INR uh, for save the time. And because it's a, uh, even either INR is uh, less than 1.7, you can go with TPA, but the risk of bleeding may be higher than those without uh, warfarin. So uh, we recommend CT, CTA, uh, Go to directly from back to me. Uh, skip TBA if the patient on warfarin. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the Sain and Kusan? So, so in a country, uh, uh, if the patient has a, a previously anticoagulants, uh, we continue the anticoagulants. Okay. I bet. Here is the, uh, our practice is very important to use the risk assessment scoring. When, when we went to restart and what are the long-term risks and benefits? Uh, it is the individualized. And what, so that the uh, usually the chest plus square score and the head plus score, and if the patient has the CKD, background CKD, and the 
if the patient can afford, sometimes we need to do the uh, MR scan to see the how uh, the burden of the micro hemorrhages is big. And so because it can predict uh, uh, the future uh, hemorrhage. So those are the factors uh, we have to consider and, the, and think over it, uh, all the comorbidities and the past history and the risk. And, the, and another important thing is that to explain very well to the family, if the patient himself or herself cannot absorb or decide. So, and the family members should be aware about why we do give uh, anticoagulant. Why we do give, and among the anticoagulant, why we do give DOAG or why we do give the uh, warfarin in those cases. And why we do continue only aspirin rather than the DOAG, although it will be at the standard uh, uh, that, that the uh, uh, option for, for this particular patient. And here in our country, because the uh, DOAG are not available in, the, in everywhere, especially in the suburban area. So the availability of the drug is also very uh, problematic for them. So in those cases, sometimes we have to be satisfied or contented with the second choice rather than first choice. But after all, uh, we have to, uh, I think it's a very important to give the clear explanation why we chose this option after involving the patient's decision. Sometimes uh, the age, although it may be 80, but very good 80, pre-morbid very good, and so and so, the risk is not that uh, high, I mean the bleeding risk, but sometimes some family members, they choose the uh, second best option. And yet again, the after all, their final decision. But uh, from our side, explanation, is very, very important. So the next question is, when indicated for angioplasty, when TIA? So I think the indications of angioplasty and TIA. Prof, yeah. so you did a lot of angioplasty. Uh, for angioplasty, I, 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 I talked before. Uh, usually, we uh, we after we um, we do a TBA and we go to send a patient to the cat lab. If the patient we cannot we cannot get the fully recanalization because as we know the, a lot of patient uh, Asian patients have intracranial stenosis, and. Um, uh, we cannot, um, if we cannot open the vessel, we have to do the balloon and uh, to do the angioplasty uh, for temporarily. Because angioplasty is more safe than a stenting. Uh, when we do the stenting in acute time, the blood still there and you put the stent. And in my experience, it's more than 50%, more than half of case, we do the stent in acute time is a reocclusion right away. It's very fast a reocclusion because the clots, the fresh clots is still there. So uh, what we do, we, we try to do angioplasty. I think try uh, angioplasty. Uh, in case we fail with angioplasty, we have to put the stamp. It's the final, it's the, it's the final uh, decision. Uh, after we, we, we try to do everything, uh, we fail and then we put the stamp. But, we have to expect more than 50% will be a patient, will be reocclusion after we standing. Uh, so uh, so we, we, we do angioplasty more uh, because it's, we found it's a zipper and, and um, it's, a, it's a feasible. Uh, it can help us as for some cases with a very severe uh, stenosis. Uh, thank you. How many cases per year you usually perform uh, that the plasty stenting per year average? Uh, for, for extra, for extra carotid? Yeah, uh, yeah, extra carotid. For, for extra carotid, uh, carotid. stenting, uh, we, we, uh, we do about 100 cases per year uh, because there's uh, not many Asian have a carotid uh, 
severe carotid disease. And usually we can, uh, we only recommend uh, the uh, stenting for extra carotid if the patient got stroke already, and then uh, the, the level of the severe, very severe cells is more than 70%. Uh, so we, uh, we do is um, uh, very, very, very careful. Uh, for intracranial stenosis or intra MCA stenosis, we don't do it because it's, uh, uh, we, we, we just do a dual antiplatelets, aspirin, copiocrel, and hydrostatin. For, for some case, we fail after we do the best thing, uh, the best dual antiplatelet, statin, hydros, and well-controlled uh, risk factors, but the patient had more recurrent stroke, more TA, we can consider for stand with very careful and very careful to explain, explain for the, the, the patient because very high risk. Thank you. So the uh, stenosis is, is must be around yeah. 70 and more than 70 or less than 70. More than 70. Stenosis. What about your management? What about your advice? Uh, less than seventy percent. Uh, less than seventy percent. We can do just medical treatment with uh, okay. statin, hydrostatin, and antiplatelet. I think is good. So, how we often um, the check uh, the and uh, 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 investigation for the stenosis? So, how you often check the stenosis after giving the antiplatelet? Um, I think, I think after you, we have a lot of experience for intracranial and uh, they respond very, very good with um, uh, medical treatment. And uh, uh, for for some case, we uh, repeat the CTA, uh, the CTA after six months or after okay. one year, is a uh, stenosis is reduced. Uh, maybe some cases uh, the first more than 70% and after that, after one year is less than uh, less than 70 or either less than 50%. I think about one third, one third of patients respond uh, very good with the medical treatment. And we don't need to do standing, we don't need to, but uh, severe stenosis can uh, refresh uh, very, very uh, dramatically with the medical treatment. Thank you. Any comment, Say. So the next question is, how will you manage patient having peptic ulcer with malignant too with stroke, not thrombotic, ischemic stroke with a stenosis relatively, or ischemic stroke and peptic ulcers and malignant too. So this is a treatment dilemma. <laughs> so Prof, Prof Nguyen, please answer for us. Actually, I'm not fully ex ex extend, understand the, the question, but I think it's the, maybe that he wants to ask the, the patient with uh, pep peptic uh, ulceration and with hemorrhage, and then we got a stroke. Yeah. So in this case, we, can, we cannot do a TPA, uh, so absolutely. Uh, but we can do thrombectomy, uh, thrombectomy, no doubt. Uh, we do a lot of cases with uh, bleeding, uh, on bleeding, but we do thrombectomy, very safety. Uh, we can do both uh, for PBI with um, uh, with um, elastic ulcer infusion, and then we do the uh, uh, thrombectomy because thrombectomy is not is not effect anymore in a coagulation uh, way. So I think it's very safety for uh, for treatment for TPA. No, That's absolutely no. So after after thrombectomy. We need to give the anti playlets. Yeah, that's other other With other. So, yeah, that's other <laughs> difficult. We need to consider the risk and benefit. But yeah. I think it's mostly we cannot use uh, anti platelet for such a the patient, uh, at least at least three or six months, because uh, we need to to confirm uh, the 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 the, um, the gastric ulceration is uh, now is uh, safe. Otherwise, the risk 
three the bleeding is very high i think it is but now i think the the medis, medication for uh, gastric ulcer is very good so i think we can restart the antiplatelet after uh, we consult uh, the specialist about uh, gastric Any comments? Okay. So the last question, uh, I think you already answered on the check my check box, but uh, I would like to know. Uh, please clarify more the government insurance for stroke patients in Vietnam. So I think you already answered. Thank you. So. All the questions and answers session is finished and we are very happy to back. So uh, this is uh, concluded uh, the sessions to I will hand over the, uh, the uh, session to the uh, Master of Ceremony. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. On behalf of Angels Initiative Stroke Care Program, I would like to take this opportunity to express our heartfelt thanks to the chairperson for your stimulating leadership during the discussion time and to the speakers for your informative and very informative and very interesting lecture and to all attendees for your very lively participation. Now, may I announce that our Angels webinar has come to the end. I'm very delighted to announce that Angels webinar is successfully concluded. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. I hope we will meet you <laughs> in the future. I hope to see you again. In, uh, see, you again. See, you. see you again. See you again.